Well, Joel, I, I, I want to ask you this question. When you were going through your deepest, darkest hour, two things. Number one, did you ever ask God why? And secondly, did you get an answer? <laughs> oh, my goodness, Rob. It was, uh, I think I asked God why a whole bunch of times. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's just one of those things I think that human nature is curious. Uh, and speaking for myself, uh, just just want to know what is going on here, what what's happening, and then just filled with my own uh, my own stuff, you know, just my own uh, self righteousness, my own anger, my own uh, excuses and and rationalizations and everything else. And I don't know if God answered me in the way that I liked the answer. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, I guess over a period of time, there there just came a, a quietness and a confidence, knowing that uh, after I've, I've done all my bluster and, and uh, kind of struggling and ricocheting off the walls, you know, he's still there. I, I, yeah. I still remember the uh, Gary uh, Paxton who wrote the Monster Bash. Remember that? Okay. Yes. Song? Yeah. Well, he, he got saved in, uh, in the early 70s, and by that I mean he, he uh, decided to turn his life over to Jesus and ask him to make himself real to him and, and mm -hmm. uh, accepted what Jesus did on the cross for his sins. And he, uh, uh, his first, one of his first songs he wrote was, He Was There All the Time. Okay. And uh, I, I really like that idea that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that the Lord is there waiting for us and he's, uh, he understands. Mm. Well, Joel, let, let me, we just got a couple of minutes. Um, is there one thing you can tell our viewing audience that um, possibly you did or a biblical principle that you followed through on just to sort of help you go from that darkness to bring you through to some type of understanding, the light, um, being able to handle it and deal and begin to move on with your life? Yeah, I'd have to say it comes in one word, gratitude and and i think that uh, i know when i've counseled and talked with people who are suicidal one of the things i'll suggest that they do is uh, is to uh, put on a a blindfold this may sound corny and crazy to, to the casual listener <laughs> hmm. but to put on a blindfold and uh, go to the bathroom with the blindfold on cook breakfast with the blindfold on uh, just try to walk around the apartment or the house with the blindfold on and do that for X number of hours, four, six, eight hours, and then take it off. And if a person is sighted, you know, to be able to start with one thing they can be thankful for, and say, you know, I'm thankful I can see. And mm. and I've had more people tell me that that has really helped them. And uh, and just just to begin to to be thankful for everything that we can think about, even if we get out a pen and a piece of paper. And another quick thing is to, to write down, there comes in time, I think, to write down everything that you're experiencing, all the pain, the anger, the frustration, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. and then make a photocopy of it, yeah. take the original, seal it up in an envelope to be opened up a year later, take the, the copy and light up the hibachi grill yeah. and in the backyard, and then claim Isaiah chapter 61, it says he gives beauty for ashes. Uh, once again, that sounds hokey and everything, but I'll tell you, there's something powerful about doing that. Mm -hmm. Revisit this one year later, on the year anniversary of writing all this down, and then write back to yourself. It's like planting a tree. You can't see it grow, but the people who visit every Thanksgiving say, wow, that tree is growing. Mm -hmm. and the same holds true with our spiritual growth and our emotional growth. Sometimes we can't, we're so close we can't see it. Yeah. In the jar, we can't read the label, mm -hmm. and somehow we read uh, two, three, four, five, six years later what we experience, all written down, and we write, our, and we see the progress. It becomes exciting to see the growth. Yeah, Joel, um, we just got thirty seconds, but here's the question: Do you believe God trains us or prepares us in the school of suffering? I, I have to say yes. Uh, it pains me to say it, <laughs> but I wish there was another way, or I wish, yeah. wish there was a magic pill or some mm -hmm. potion, but I, I think it's, it's really probably the only way we really will learn and grow is through the, the, the school of suffering. Wow. Joel Freeman, author of the book, When Life Isn't Fair, 
making sense out of our suffering. Joel, thank you so much for your time and sharing your incredible wisdom and insight regarding this whole subject of suffering. Thank you, Rob, for the, uh, for the privilege. God bless you, Joel. Uh, take care. We'll be in touch soon. Okay. Thank